On Sunday, May 13th, George Washington arrived in Philadelphia for the opening of the Constitutional Convention scheduled for the next day. Washington's arrival was met with bells and artillery. He was received by troops of the city. Washington's first step was to visit Benjamin Franklin. It was said that the convention was attended by demigods. Certainly there has never been a gathering like it in American history, and probably in world history. The states sent their most respected representatives. Only Rhode Island was absent when the convention finally did get underway. May 14th was scheduled for the opening of the convention. On this day, only Virginia and Pennsylvania was represented. It was a rainy week, and passage to Philadelphia was very often difficult. It was not until the 25th that an opening quorum of seven states was achieved. The arrival of every delegation was dutifully reported in the Philadelphia newspaper as a great affair of state. The first meeting of the convention and all of the subsequent events took place in the Philadelphia State House, the same location that the Declaration of Independence had been signed. The first act of the convention was to declare George Washington the chairman. The second, to declare that all of the deliberation was to be secret. To this, all of the delegates pledged. There was no official recording secretary, but James Madison made it his task to record the debates. With Washington firmly in control, the convention got down to business. It was apparent to nearly everyone that while the convention had been called to modify the Articles of Confederation, the task before them was the establishment of a new form of government for the United States. The delegation from Virginia started the convention off with a plan for a strong central government. The Virginia plan called for a House of Representatives, which would be elected by the voters of the state. The size of the House would be proportional to the size of the state. The upper house, the executive, and the judiciary were to be selected by the lower house. Furthermore, the Virginia plan called for the federal government to be allowed to negate any state laws that interfered with the federal government. The Virginia plan was fiercely opposed by those who feared a strong central government. It was further opposed by representatives of the small states who felt that the plan would give too much power to the large states. The smaller states responded with a plan of their own. Their plan, known as the New Jersey Plan, called for a legislature of one house whose members were to be selected by the state legislature. The debate went on throughout the summer. Finally, Roger Sherman of Connecticut proposed a compromise plan in which the House of Representatives would be elected directly by the people of the states. The numbers of members of the House would be proportional to the size of the state. The Senate, however, would have two members from each state. The senators were to be chosen by the state legislatures. The compromise was accepted by the convention. One of the additional features of the compromise included a provision that any tax bill needed to originate in the House of Representatives. A further compromise was needed to solve the divisions between northern and southern states. The two issues that divided the north and south were slavery and trade. On the issue of slavery, the question was, whether slaves should be counted as people in counting the numbers of representatives in the House. The South wanted to, in order to increase their representation. The North opposed. A compromise was reached in which slaves were counted as three-fifths of a person. Furthermore, an agreement was reached that the Congress would not interfere with slave trade for 20 years. Finally, the Southern concern that trade agreements might not be beneficial to the South was addressed by requiring a two-thirds majority in the Senate to ratify any foreign agreement. It was then up to the Committee of Detail to finalize the wording of the Constitution. The Committee added the preamble to the Constitution that included the key words, We the People. Finally, on Monday, September 17th, the completed Constitution was presented to the Convention. After it was read, Dr. Benjamin Franklin made his last major contribution to a country that he had done so much for. He had Mr. Wilson read a stirring speech in favor of the Constitution and then called for a vote. After a brief amendment was presented, which General Washington supported, the Constitution was put to a vote. Ten states supported it, South Carolina was divided, New York at the time did not have a quorum present, and Rhode Island had never attended.